Oh, hi there. Lift your skinny fists like antennas to heaven, for the holy grail of post-rock has just been found. Godspeed, you black emperors, all lights on the hairy amp drooling. If you haven't heard of this band, that's okay. They're one of those groups that seem to like being obscure. No lead vocalists, unusual tunings, its members are often labeled anarchists. Their album releases are occasionally unannounced, packaged with political demands, they rarely interact with the audience during live shows, they have an album that's vinyl release, ends with an infinite loop, and their songs can be upwards of 30 minutes long. When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? But if you're in the headspace for it, Godspeed You Black Emperor are one of the most cinematic, overwhelmingly beautiful, and unsettling bands you will ever hear. And they are the subject of one of the most elusive album releases of the late 20th century. And this is their latest LP, their fourth full-length album that you can get a hold of. Before their official debut release, the mind-melting F-sharp, A-sharp, Infinity, the band had a very limited release of their first effort, All Lights on the Hairy Amp Drooling. Released in 1994, the album was the first demo officially released under Godspeed You Black Emperor, named after the 1967 documentary of the same name about the eponymous Japanese biker gang, the Black Emperors. The album was recorded between spring and fall of 1993, almost entirely by frontman Ephraim Menick, with minor contributions from Maru Peasant on bass and Mike Moya on guitar. Ephraim self-published the album, and having spent his late teens and early 20s homeless, he only had enough money to make 33 copies of the demo, each with handmade inserts. Godspeed would soon move away from a solo project, evolving into a nine-piece band and the meanderings of all lights on the hairy amp drooling were quickly forgotten. By the late 2000s, Godspeed's label, Constellation Records, had low-quality scans of the Lost Album's packaging on their website, showing that they did have a copy or were in touch with someone else who did. Their description of the album reads, This very out-of-print cassette is the only released document of the earliest days of Godspeed. To even call it a release is a stretch, as only 33 were ever dubbed. At the time, the band was comprised of Ephraim and Morrow only, and this cassette foretells where the current ensemble would ultimately go. At this time, only die-hard Godspeed fans even knew about the record, and when attempting to order the demo directly from the label, Constellation Records would respond with lines like, You'll never hear that tape, or you will die before you hear that tape. Ephraim believed that if the album saw a commercial release, it would be disappointing to fans, expecting a Godspeed album and getting something different. It would be hard to put out without people feeling ripped off. I wouldn't want someone buying it thinking they were getting a Godspeed record, only to find out it's something completely different. In the late 90s and 2000s, more information came out about the album through interviews, where Manic described the tape as an almost 70-minute vocal rock album with little similarities to the band's other work. And even by this point, he was surprised the album hadn't made its way online. I keep expecting it's gonna pop up, but it never does. Over time, because of the album's mythical status, fakes began to emerge. Usually these were just made up of obscure Godspeed or other side project releases. Ephraim was even fooled by one of these fakes on torrent sites, but after downloading it, he found it was just a bootlegged live performance from 1999. One notable fake was perpetrated by Pirate Bay user E7Ad9 in 2008 that was just a mixtape of other artists that sounded like Godspeed. And as late as 2018, songs were posted to YouTube claiming to be from All Lights. These songs were eventually ruled out, but the band who actually made them has never been discovered. Despite fans salivating for the album for decades, it wouldn't be until 2013 when we would finally get our first hint of the lost demo. In 2013, Redditor Casket Jack posted to r slash music claiming to have a copy of the rare Godspeed demo. I accidentally call this guy Cactus Jack a few times in the video, but it's pretty funny so I left him in. Sometime between 1990 and 1995, I was hanging out at this little place called Room 201 Records in Moncton, New Brunswick. I always went there because I used to collect demo tapes from the local bands of every city I went to. Anyways, I was there going through the tapes. Wow, cassettes, eh? And I started talking to some guy. If I remember correctly, he told me he wasn't local, but had a tape I should check out. I brought it home and listened to it, didn't really like it, and stashed it away with other demos I'd picked up. Fast forward to this week, I'm cleaning out my music room closet, and I stumble across my bin of old demos. The tape I got from the guy in Moncton is sitting on the top of the pile. I pull it out and decide to google the name. Anyways, here it is. According to Wikipedia, it was limited to 33 copies and no copies are known to still exist. This is kind of cool. Anyways, I guess I'm just looking for some advice. What would you guys do with it? When asked for proof, Casket Jack produced pictures of the tape and two songs from the demo, Random Lovely Moncton Blues and Dad Mom Daddy. They were quickly uploaded to YouTube. 
Casket Jack's pictures lined up with what was available on Constellation's website, and the tracks sounded legit. Everyone on the subreddit pleaded with Casket Jack to post the rest of the album. But as is all too common online, it takes just one or two jerks to ruin things for everyone. After receiving threats, Casket Jack deleted their account and never attempted to sell the tape. The chances of recovering the lost album went from 33 to 32. Some called the whole thing a hoax, but I think this is just what people had to tell themselves after being so close to recovering the lost album. And if there ever was any doubt in Cactus Jack's story, they would be completely vindicated. On February 4th, 2022, a 4chan Anon posted a mega link of the entire album, which was quickly uploaded to YouTube. Constellation Records declined to comment on the authenticity of the album, but 10 days later, on February 14th, 2022, Godspeed officially commented on the 4chan link, confirming that both the leak by Cactus Jack and the recent leak were all real. Their mysterious album was finally found. Godspeed officially released the album to Bandcamp, calling it a quote, retirement letter, possibly a reference to Ephraim never making a solo music again, or that he was planning to quit music after the album. All proceeds of the tape will be donated to Canada's Justice for Peace in the Middle East campaign to provide medical oxygen to the Gaza Strip. Manic would talk about the newly uncovered album on the Creative Control podcast. I don't feel like the cassette was a mistake. I don't feel embarrassed by it. If I was younger than I am, I would have just put it on SoundCloud. I'm not confused about any of that, you know. It's just that you brought up another point, which is it's not Godspeed. And it feels a little disrespectful to my friends who I played music with for almost 30 years to be presenting this thing that was just me in a tiny room, you know? The album that fans were told they would never hear, that eluded the internet for almost 30 years, is now officially released, preserving what was once a 1 and 33 experience. A monumental achievement for lost media and post-rock fans alike. Thank you so much for watching. Before I go, I have to tell you a funny story about Godspeed. I was the designated driver for a friend's bachelor party, but I wasn't invited to the actual wedding. And these were people I'd known for a while and hung out with in the past. So I was pretty annoyed that they asked me to be DD, but didn't want me at the wedding. It was probably just a small wedding, but I was still pretty annoyed with the situation. And one of my biggest character flaws is I can be pretty passive aggressive at times. So when I picked everyone up to drive them around to local bars and decided to put music on, Godspeed You Black Emperor's debut album, F Sharp, A Sharp, Infinity, was in my CD player and started playing so I passive aggressively let it play and I didn't have this plan it just kind of just kind of happened and every time I drove them to a new bar I started it over and if you've heard this album it starts with this really unsettling spoken word and string music intro <laughs> and this served as the soundtrack to the bachelor party and the funniest part is no one said anything when we were driving it was complete silence except for this album we were having a good time at the bars and a good time on our way back to the car but every time the album started playing the mood completely shifted did. <laughs> Maybe they really enjoyed it. Maybe they're just vibing with it, but <laughs> it seems like kind of a buzzkill. Anyways, as I'm telling you this story, I realize this kind of behavior is probably what kept you from getting invited to the wedding in the first place. <laughs> this is Mike with All Things Lost. Godspeed, you Black Emperor. All lights on the Harry Amp drooling. Uh, forever.